These here are the world's first digital coolers, not analog, digital coolers. And these are from Deepcool. They also got a digital case. What the heck does it mean? And uh, what does it give you? Well, we're gonna find out. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description description below. Now jokes aside, I actually think this is a pretty cool feature and pretty clever way of adding something to a product that makes it more useful, doesn't compromise anything else on the cooler basically. And in essence, these are coolers that also display your GPU or CPU temperature. Let me show you how this works. So you've got your cooler, this one here, the AK400 Digital actually comes with pre-applied thermal paste, which is very nice. And then on top of the cooler here, you've got the usual heatsink. Everything's the same, apart from this top plastic thing that goes on the top. And inside this, there is a little uh, display that can show you the you know, temperature. So out of the plastic, we have our RGB header because you do have RGB on the sides of these, as well as we have a USB 2.0 header, what you can see in here. And that's where you can control what di gets displayed on there. Let's get it installed here. So once you've got your bracket installed, you take the cooler, we'll take the fan off for now. Interestingly, that is one of those things that can actually affect performance, is that those cables come down the heatsink, as you can see here, which does restrict the airflow a little bit. As you can see, it's not gonna be as good, but it's gonna be minimal. Okay, I reinstalled the fan back and put it on the CPU header, CPU fan. Now you've got another two cables there. This USB 2.0 goes in there, but the bad thing is that if you wanna go around, actually you can do that. If you wanna go underneath the motherboard, right? Make the cable go up and then let's say, and I've just made it come out from the bottom there. There is enough cable slack to make it go underneath the cable, uh, like motherboard and then put it there. So perhaps you wanna do that before installing the motherboard onto the case or install the cooler outside the case onto the motherboard, run the cable and then install the motherboard inside the case. And then we've got the RGB header, which goes to the five volt header. So you've got three pins there. Okay, I've got this plugged in. I'm gonna turn the power on in the back. And then let's see if it turns on. Okay, once you're in your system, it doesn't quite show you the uh, the temperature on the top yet because you need to install the deep cool program for that. So basically what you have to do is you go here, you go deep cool digital AK400 and then under the cooler page, you go to downloads. Here we can see that the Deepcool Digital setup. So that's what we want. We're gonna download that. So once it's downloaded, you just extract all. We've got it there. Double click on it. You're gonna have to press more info and then run it away. So we'll put it onto all of the users. Yes, install. So now once it's installed, you go to Deepcool Digital, you open that, yes, you've got this little icon here now, you can right click on it, launch at Windows Startup, right, device, you can choose AK400, this is the digital, this base switch, we can show temperature, as you can see right now it is showing temperature, temperature display is in Celsius, utilization, usage so this shows cpu temperature and um, usage right it can't show gpu it only shows a G cpu or we can show automatic so it's going to flick in between temperature as you can see and then usage right pretty cool now if you have something the likes of ak500 here or the AK620, which I have there as well. So these have a bit larger displays and essentially it works exactly the same. And I'm gonna do it live. I'm gonna use the 2.0 header. I'm gonna pull this off and then that should go off now, right? 
and we're gonna put that one back on here. Let's see if we use the RGB switch there as well. So we'll have to exit it probably right now because I've pulled it out and we're gonna go deep cool and open the program again, right? It instantly minimizes and goes in here and there we go, it's already working. Let's take this one off. As you can see, it's showing temperature, but it's right now it's showing that coolest temperature, not this one, but it works exactly the same. So the actual display part, I believe is exactly the same amount so it doesn't look any bigger than on the other one it's just a bit wider and you can see the leds there yep we'll go temperature let's see if i plug in two both of them what does it do then no look at them ah, <laughs> they're both working look at that device yep it's showing both of them you i could have two separate devices show different things as well so right now i'm adjusting the AK400, if I go display switch and that goes only temperature and then we'll use the big one here, AK500 and we're going to use utilization on there separately. As you can see, one is showing temperature and one is showing usage. And then we've got the AK620, which is the most powerful cooler out of these and then it works exactly the same as the AK500. But then we've got the digital case. So this is quite a cool, interesting case. This is the CH560 digital, and there are white versions of this as well as the non-digital version of this as well. And basically the digital and non-digital only difference is this little side panel here, which shows your temperature or usage. But in here, this panel is slightly different because it does a little bit different things. But I like that it's very kind of minimalistic square design. We haven't got like some weird curves going. I, I kind of like the design very much. And it's got a lot of airflow because this bottom panel here is just airflow. So if you want to have some airflow from the bottom there, which you can have some fans there just pulling it upwards as well, it's fantastic. You've got mesh on the top, mesh on the front, mesh on the side, mesh on the bottom. So you can get quite a lot of airflow. So let's take it apart. This side panel comes off with a magnet there. You can screw it in through this back screw in here if you wanted to, but as default, there is nothing there. And as you can see, this is just a mesh that goes through here and you've got the screen or panel. Now, interestingly, even though this bottom bit being a mesh, there is a little bit of a, an interesting thing. This bit on the power supply shroud isn't mesh, which means that if you got fans in here, which you can mount 220 millimeter fans in here, and let's say they're pulling the air up that gets either from there, it only gets the air from whatever has been pushed from the front or that's been pulled out from the power supply shroud not from the side here which means the airflow from the side kind of isn't forced it only pulls air in from the side if you create negative air pressure here so if you've got more outtakes here and then pulls air out and pushes the air out means that it starts to like pull the air in from these sides as well and maybe a little bit from the back here the top has a little mesh or dust filter it's magnetic and here you can see the fan mounts. In terms of the fan capacity, you can fit up to 340 millimeter fans in the front or 120 millimeters, three there goes there as well. On the top, you can have 240 millimeter fans, boom, boom, or 320 millimeter fans. You can also mount 220 millimeter fans on the bottom here and then 120 or 140 millimeter fan in the back. It comes pre-installed with four fans, three in the front and one in the back, which is quite good for airflow. So potentially you don't actually need to change any of the fans if you just want to use the stock fans. What I do want to find out is what does this side panel show us? So I'm going to put this on as well so we'll actually see what the final look is. I've got the USB cable for this. Let's see if we can a little bit more. Okay, and then let's plug it in over here. Okay. A restart did it. Look at that. CPU and GPU. I've got no GPU in here, so that's why it's probably not showing anything on the, the GPU, but it is working. And this is much brighter display on the case than what we have on the cooler. 
as you can see the cooler is like a bit behind this like tempered plastic or whatever so it's got a little bit of a black tint but this is very clear through and actually I really like how this looks there. As you can see now, it's showing up two devices there, AK400 Digital, AK560 Digital. If we go, sorry, not AK, CH560. And let's have a look what we can see there. We can show GPU and CPU. We can see temperature, utilization or automatic. Right now it is temperature displaying. So let's see what happens if we put on something like Cinebench R23. This goes to 100 degrees now because this is 3900K on that cooler. Let's have a look what happens here. Oh, look at that CPU. Can you see the, the green there shows utilization? It's 100% and 100 degrees. It doesn't flash on the case, but it's flashing on the, the cooler. Now then, the price increase for these products isn't something massive because sometimes you see these gimmicks and you're like paying so much more but this is only a little bit more if you want to check out the latest pricing i highly recommend checking out the links in the description below where i'm going to leave this one the 500 620 400 and the case in white and black if you want to check them out both of them whether you go in with one build or the other one the interesting thing also about this case is that actually the front fans are 140 millimeter fans let me know what you think in the comment section below it's cool and also useful depending which one is more important for you for me both i like useful probably more but cool also, it needs to be, because if it doesn't look cool, what's the point? Links in the description below. But also, if you do want to build yourself the best bank for create a PC, and perhaps want to use some of these parts, then check them out, the build guides in the description below. They're completely free. There's four videos, whatever your budget are, there are a video for you in there. I'll tell you the best parts to get, the best options. Go check it out in the description below. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.